Hello, and welcome to Worship here at Second Baptist Church in Lubbock, Texas. My name is Mike, and I want to be the first to thank you and welcome you to our beautiful, inclusive community known as Second Baptist Church. We have so many things to offer here at Second B. A beautiful music program consisting of our choir, our orchestra, our handbells, even the little tykes have their own choir program. We also have a vibrant children's and youth program going on. We have Bible study for all ages at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday. Two beautiful in-person traditional worship services at 8.30 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. There's something for everybody here at Second B. So we invite you to come visit us at 6109 Chicago Avenue. It's at Chicago in the South Loop. Very easy to get to right here in Lubbock, Texas. You can also visit our website at secondb.org to learn more about us. Check out our Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, and Instagram, all at Second Baptist LBK. And if you just want to talk to somebody and find out more information, you can do that as well. Give us a call here at the church office at 806 783 0202. We would love to introduce you to the awesome Second Baptist Church here in Lubbock. Again, thank you so much for joining us here today. I do want to ask one last thing. If you happen to be a first time visitor today, please take just a moment to visit our website at secondb.org slash welcome and fill out the quick form on there just to let us know that you took the time to visit us today to check out Second B and maybe let us know more of how we can help you get connected here at Second Baptist. Thank you so much again for joining us. We have a beautiful worship service planned for you today. Let's turn our hearts and minds to worship now. Thank you and God bless.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today at Second Baptist Church. I am honored to be here uh, with all of you, especially if you're visiting with us today. Thank you so much for coming to Second B. We sure would love to get to know you just a little bit better. There are ways for you to fill out cards and scan our worship guide. We promise not to stalk you, but we'd love to say hello. So thanks for being here today. This is my check-in with all of you. I hope you're doing okay. How are your brackets? Are they smashed? Yes, thumbs down. Mine went kind of down yesterday. However, I'd like to be proud and say that my center bracket is still correct, and we'll see how that goes tonight. I'm pretty proud that I think I've picked the winner so far. Um, hope you're having fun watching those games like we are. Uh, a few things I'd like to remind you of. This coming Thursday, we have another Lenten lunch. This sure has been fun seeing y'all meet up with us midweek and hearing our speakers and having some soup and sandwiches in here. So join us again this Thursday if you are able. It's a short one hour in the middle of your day, and I promise you won't be late getting back to work or wherever you need to be. Also, it's time to order your Easter lilies if you haven't done so. There's an insert in your order of worship if you want to do that. We will decorate this whole stage on Easter Sunday. It'll be beautiful, and you'll get to take those lilies home with you after the service. So you can order those online, on paper, or by calling the office, too. And a huge, huge thank you. Several of you carried in today with you bags of eggs, stuffed Easter eggs, and I took them from you, and we dropped them in the gray bucket, and there's still more to be had. So thank you for grabbing those at the store and bringing them so that we can have a super fun Easter extravaganza on April the 9th. All of y'all are welcome. At 1130 that morning, we'll have egg hunts and food trucks and music and games, and it's a great fun day for everyone. So thank you so much for helping put that on. Now let's just... That's, I felt like I was talking really fast. Let's take a deep breath and prepare ourselves for the worship service today. The Lord be with you.
able to stand with me for the call to worship this morning. Thirsty, our hearts crave living water. Weary, our minds are tried by thoughts that do not come from God. Thirsty, hungry, and weary, let us pursue the God of love. Lord of all, we come before you today and we ask that you allow us to experience your presence in the fullness. Take out distractions, whatever blocks our hearts and our minds, God, and allow us to turn to you, to focus on you, and to receive what you wish for us to today. God, it is in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen.
All right, boys and girls, I'd love for you to come join me at the front for children's time today. Come on down. Let's do this. Welcome. Come on down, Eva. Hi, friends. Come on down. Here, Sadie, there's a spot right over here. You want to come sit over here? Yeah. Well, Mama, she wants you to sit with her. Thanks for joining us. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. How was Barrett? Come join the group. Be part of our party over here. There we go. Nice. How was your spring break? Everybody had a good week? Sleep? No. Thumbs down? Oh, no. Sleepovers are great. Sleeping is excellent on spring. Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. You had friends. You had family come in. Yeah. And you had a good time. I heard all about it. It was so great. I'm so happy for you. Hey, Bennett, you, I'm going to pick on you for a second, okay? Can I ask you a question? Yesterday, I heard you scored a goal. Yes. Okay. That has been, and it was in soccer of all sports. Yes. Proud of you. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Like Bennett, who scored a goal yesterday, have you ever not scored a goal in a game? Yeah, if you didn't score the goal in the game, would you have quit and not gone back the next week? Uh, no, the thing is, we don't score goals every time. Uh, you guys know my Mason over there? Yeah. He's big now, right? When Mason was in first grade, how many of you were in first grade? Yeah, when Mason was y'all's age, we started getting these messages from his teachers, and they would say, oh, Mrs. Gallardo, there's some red flags, red flags. That was the word they would use all the time. We don't know about this Mason. He's not doing great in class. He's struggling. Hang on, Eva, I'll get right to you, I promise. And they said, hey, we are worried about Mason. We don't think he's going to be very successful. We may have to keep him back a year. We're not, we're not reading very well. He's struggling. And you know what? We were a little worried, and we didn't know what to do, and we thought, oh, my goodness, we've had these really, you know, boys are doing really well, and then Mason's struggling, and we couldn't figure it out, and we had testing. And you know what? About 10 years later... Guess what Mason and I did this week? We went on a trip and toured some colleges. If he had given up in first grade, right, and we said, forget it, that's it, he's just not going to be successful in school, we wouldn't be where we are today, touring colleges, getting ready to go to school. He's pretty smart. He's going to do all right. I think he's quite successful now. That's the thing. We don't give up. When someone says, oh, today, sorry, you didn't score the goal, you didn't pass the test, you didn't do well, we don't say, well, that's it, I'm done, shut it down, I'm done for the rest. We wouldn't do that, would we, Tessa? No. And that is not, Eva, right? That is not what God wants us to do. That is not what the Bible says to do. It does not say, you try once and you're done, right? Sometimes things just don't go your way the first time. But guess what? You've got parents, you've got church, you have prayer. You have your faith in God that's going to help you be successful. And later on in life, you guys are going to be scoring goals and going to colleges and leading groups and teaching people because you guys are smart and successful. And not everything is always going to be perfect. And you know that, right? And you teach us so well, right, how to get up and try again tomorrow. And that's what we love about kids. Yes. Mama, I scored a goal once. You scored. It was awesome. I bet you felt so good. Yes, you scored a lot because you practiced and you worked hard and you didn't give up the first time you didn't score a goal, right? That is what we are supposed to do, and that is what God wants us to do, and that is what your family I wants you to do. I soccer, but I didn't play in school because it was my first ball game. It was your and first one, Margo. And she won. See? Oh, she's going to be successful later on because she's going to keep working. You guys have helped you know, so much today. We went to go in the tunnel with people. Did we get to be, give people eye contact? Thank, high fives in the tunnel is the best way to start and end the game. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much. I am so proud of who you are and what you are going to become someday. I can already see it in your faces. Thank you for being who you are and teaching us all to work hard. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you so much for um, the strength and the power that you give each and every one of us. I help, thank you so much for the help you give us to keep going even when it is not going our way. Help us to be successful as we grow, Lord. We love you so much, and we honor your name. Amen. All right, if we're going to preschool praise, we're going to walk down this way and go hang out with Miss Donna. Otherwise, you can go see your folks. Let's go, Margo. This morning's Hebrew scripture 
is Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, for he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would pray with me these words from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will wars go on forever? How long, O Lord, will your face seem hidden? Will we ever know your presence? How long, O Lord, will we wrestle with our enemies and our neighbors? Look upon us and answer us, O God. We cry out to you. But we will trust in your unfailing love. Our hearts rejoice in your salvation. We will sing to the Lord with praise, for God has been good to us. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue to worship. This morning's gospel reading is from Luke 13, 6 through 9. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for this fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
thank you for joining us uh, for worship. If there's any way that we can be of help to you or follow up, I encourage you to use those prayer cards and guest cards as they're available in front of you. We take uh, particularly those uh, prayer cards uh, seriously and are honored uh, to partner with you in prayer. As you may have uh, read in our publications, our friend and sister in Christ, Reverend uh, Catherine Boren, has decided to uh, step down officially from our, our team here in just a couple weeks. Uh, she will have her for just a, a little bit uh, longer, but she's uh, going to pursue some other uh, fabulous options uh, in her life. As, and we're just so grateful for her and for her ministry. She has been a blessing to this church. And I invite you to join me in appreciating her and blessing her as she has been a blessing to us as well. I invite you now uh, to take a moment to breathe, to allow uh, the distractions of this life and this world uh, to fade. And allow the awareness of God's presence to be magnified. If all we hear today is that we are filled first with God's Spirit and God's grace, it would be enough. Amen. Uh, encountered an article certainly outside of uh, my realm of expertise by the Associated uh, Press who uh, did an extensive uh, study uh, researching uh, the uh, work of, of farmers, uh, particularly uh, corn growers uh, in, in Iowa. And this extensive uh, study more or less came to a conclusion and estimated that the incredible amount of, of hard work, the incredible amount of determination, the incredible work amount of, of prayer, the in, in, incredible amount of time that farmers invested in, in growing their uh, crops of corn there in Iowa uh, could be calculated to make about a 5% impact on the yield of their farm, 5%. Uh, that may be somewhat discouraging. We are amateur among most amateurs, uh, gardeners at our home, and I'm thinking, wow, 5%, that, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Go us. Um, the uh, physicists, some of the smartest people in the world, uh, estimate uh, that uh, we understand, that we know of somewhere near 3 to 4% of all the energy and all the matter as it exists in the entirety of the universe. <laughs> 3 to 4%. I find this to be inspiring. I find these numbers to be encouraging. This is not, this is not to, to discourage. Rather, when I hear that our best effort is worth about 5%, when I hear that our greatest thoughts, mine might be worth 3%, maybe yours are worth 4%. This causes, this, this is an occasion to give thanks. The longer we live, I think the more we discover we don't know. Even, even if all, even if, we can actually have a 5% influence on things, even if, Richard Rohr says one of the great spiritual truths in all of reality is for us to come to the understanding that we are not in control. We're not in control. And maybe Lent is a, is a spiritual season. Maybe Lent, in, in one summary, is the invitation to celebrate, the invitation to recognize that we're not in control, to, to make time to acknowledge and grow in our awareness that, that even our best effort is worth 5%, that even our best thoughts may be worth 3 and 4%. This, this, I think, is the invitation of Lent. Come on in. We're not in control. And the further we go, we may, uh, we may have uh, fewer answers and more questions. Jesus tells a, a parable uh, one of his uh, primary forms of, of teaching and, and, and communicating. Uh, there, there, it's a playful way that Jesus uh, chooses to teach and, and to communicate the mysteries and the wonder and the grace of God. Uh, parables, exegetically speaking, don't have a point. Uh, parables are not to be understood. Rather, parables have many points. Uh, rather, uh, parables are endless in understanding. And, and I believe uh, this is a true rubric that we can apply to most of our scripture, 
most of our scripture is endless in understanding. Most of our scripture is is endless in the many uh, uh, points uh, that it makes pr- primarily about God and what it means uh, to live a, a spiritual life. And, and so we'll, we'll encounter uh, some of those uh, points with with regard to, to this uh, scripture uh, specifically. But I, I think it's fascinating. I really do believe that the scripture is as alive and dynamic and as helpful today as it has has ever been. It's still the voice of God's spirit and God's wisdom speaks through the words of this text. And we get to listen. We get, we get to hear uh, the whisper. It has been said that the Holy Spirit never shouts. The Holy Spirit never, and, and, we, and we listen uh, for that whisper in the text here. Throughout uh, Jesus' teaching, as well as in his ministry of healing, uh, uh, Jesus is interested in, in agrarian concepts and, and soil and, and seed, and we find that on display, of course, uh, today as well. Uh, I, I, there is modern research that I find to be uh, captivating, and, and maybe you're well uh, aware of this. Now, I have, um, I have sensitive feet. Um, so, so I, I prefer to wear shoes. We struggle to get our kids to even wear clothes. Uh, but modern research suggests and it has, has displayed that there are incredible, incomparable, intrinsic uh, uh, benefits to connecting with dirt and the soil and the ground. Uh, connecting with the ground can I- improve your immune system. Uh, connecting uh, with dirt regularly can boost uh, vitamin uh, D levels. It's incredible. Connecting uh, with uh, the dirt can, in fact, uh, can in fact uh, 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 benefit us uh, mentally, uh, spiritually, emotionally. Genesis 1 it begins with this incredible uh, display of God creating all that there is and was and will be. Uh, Genesis 1 is, is known as an, an, an ex nihilo tradition, Latin for out of nothing. It's a beautiful poem. And, and then by the, time the, uh, the, by the time the story gets to Genesis 2, it takes a sharp turn. And tells another creation story. And in Genesis 2, it's not out of nothing. No, there, there seems to be the existence somehow of, of rivers and earth. And God, in Genesis 2, doesn't create, a, create out of no, nothing. God rather takes the dirt into divine hands and breathes life into the dirt. It's very poetic, the uh, word for dirt here in Hebrew, Adama, the word for humanity, uh, Adam, that word for breath and life is the same as the word for spirit, Ruha. It's absolutely in- incredible, suggesting even from the very beginning that it is good for us to be connected to the dirt. It is good for us to be connected uh, to the soil. There will come a day were those who were once dirt, those who were once ashes in the very hands of God, receiving the breath and the life of God, there will come a day in which all of us will be laid back into the dirt. We will return to ashes. And, and we believe that there will come another day in which God again will take the dirt and the soil and the ashes that God again will breathe life into uh, that uh, which uh, displays all of God's glory, uh, dirt. I I can remember driving uh, from Waco, that town that has loser basketball teams. I can remember uh, driving from from Waco uh, to Tyler along uh, Highway uh, 31, and I can remember this sign uh, it, it seemed to be a, like a, a landscaping uh, a, a place, and they had this massive sign, and uh, it was white, and it was hand painted. It was like f- four by eight sheets of, of just uh, regular lumber, and it was hand painted with two words, in large red letters. Uh, it said, "Good dirt." <laughs> and I never drove past that place, and there wasn't a line of trucks. 
uh, uh, ready to, to fill up, uh, fill up. Now, I'm not a marketing e- expert, but I'd love to be in the meetings that said, what should the sign say? Good dirt. All right, good meeting. Meeting dismissed. This stuff is so good, it just, it just sells itself. It's incredible. No, and and, and I, I think about that sign often, and, and I, I think about those words in a little bit. The dirt is good, right? In the very beginning, when God created all this, God said it was good. And God took that which is good and breathed life into it and made it even more incredible. Friends, it is good to be connected to the dirt. <laughs> Let's get dirty. <laughs> Jesus uh, telling this this uh, fascinating uh, parable places a fig tree in the middle of a vineyard. In my in my in my limited experience of uh, pastoring, um, most almost all at some point who have come and and and, and I just such. Uh, privileged and honored to, to get to know uh, some people, most who have come and spoke to me, and many, most have said something like, I'm a little bit different than, you see, what's different about my life is, you see, what's different a little bit about my uh, faith or uh, my values or, or my upbringing, you see, what's a little bit different about my profession is, and, and, and I'm a little bit different than everyone. Now, everyone is saying that. So if if you feel as though you are a fig tree growing in a vineyard, amen. And and I I think that's church at its best. That that we are different is church at its best. Best this vineyard is is really a, a metaphor for the for the realm for the the reality the the rule and the presence of God. It is in God's presence that we would these things that make us so unique from everyone else. These are to be celebrated. These are gifts. It's a wild story: a fig tree growing in a vineyard. Yeah, and you know exactly what that feels like, doesn't it? The owner of the property comes to the gardener and says, why is this fig tree not producing? You see, you see it's likely that this vineyard is a producing vineyard. The, the, the grapes are thriving on the vine just like Isabella. And so now the property owner has compared the production of the fig tree to the production of the vine. And the gardener, in incredible wisdom, says, no, 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 no. You're not to be, your production is not to be compared with any other level of production. Further, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, the, The gardener suggests that the fig tree be treated in a similar manner in which the vine is to be treated. You see, these vines uh, would be trimmed. They would be pruned back. Have you ever felt pruned back? (laughs) Isn't that fun? (laughs) These vines would be uh, pruned back for the first several uh, years in order to, to... to encourage the nutrients, to encourage the strength of the growing of this uh, plant down to its roots, down uh, towards its stems. And then, after an extended season uh, of pruning, then the vine would blossom and yield. It's absolutely incredible. The gardener says, we're treating uh, this fig tree with the same intent, with the same uh, joy, with the same strategy, with the same welcome as all the other vines. Suggesting, I believe, very boldly, the wideness, the universality of God's vineyard. Uh, that all would be welcomed, that all would be uh, cared for, that all would receive uh, the, the master touch of the gardener, uh, pruning them back until they are uh, ready. And like our world, uh, this uh, uh, vineyard owner uh, would prefer that his plants produce. And yet the gardener says, in complete and utter wisdom, give it another year. And there may be no translating really necessary there, but 
give it another a year. In, in a fast food world, in a world that wants results, in a world that wants to know, after two years of a pandemic, what have you done for me lately? M- might we hear the calm, kind voice of the gardener that says, it's okay. It's okay if you're not yielding right now. It is good even to take, a, to take another year. Yeah, maybe Lent is, the, is a season in which we say, I need not yield. I need not produce. I need not make. And yet I will receive the pruning of the master gardener. I will receive a time in which I might rest. I will dig around the roots just a little. I will fill my wheel barrel with manure and place it in all of its richness in, in, in where it will reach that which is down deep. The gospel is often, uh, I believe, extremely countercultural. And, and this, I believe, is among uh, the stronger countercultural uh, teachings present really, throughout, uh, present really throughout the teachings of Jesus, that you could slow down, that you can uh, rest, that you can uh, be you. James uh, uh, Bryant Smith, a Quaker friend, um, teacher, author, in, in a wonderful book, The Good and Beautiful Guy. He tells a story of a, of a, a teacher-student uh, encounter in which a student came uh, to his teacher before, uh, before class uh, began. And he said, uh, the student said to the teacher, uh, could I possibly, I got a lot going on in my life, I'm really busy, uh, all, all the things, could I possibly take a shorter course? And the teacher uh, kindly responded, well, that depends. <laughs> The student said, you know, I got all this stuff going on. Can I, can I take a shorter course? And the teacher said, well, that depends on what you want to be. Yeah. You see, a squash takes about six months to grow, but a tree takes decades. That depends on what you want to be. A squash spend their whole existence in a growing phase. Our girls call them squish. We will try to never correct that. It's the cutest thing ever. If only our squish were edible. Squash spend their whole existence in a growing, or better put, going phase. And yet trees, mighty trees, spend just a small amount of time each year in a growing phase and then spend the rest of the time shoring up that growth. So that depends on what you want to be. Moliere, the French playwright, says the best fruit comes from the trees that grow the slowest. Words that have encouraged my soul for uh, years uh, now I'd like to share with you as we close. This is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, a Catholic priest and scientist. He writes this, above all, trust in the slow work of God We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should. We should like to skip the immediate stages. We are important. We are impatient of being on the way to something important, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it might take a very long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas, they, they mature gradually. So let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force upon them as though you could be today what you can only become tomorrow. That is, if grace and circumstances are of good will. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you, only God can say what that will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that in divine hands you are being held. 
accept the anxiety of feeling yourself as incomplete. Let us pray together. Above all, we trust in your slow work, O God. Above all, help us to trust in your slow faithfulness, O God. Above all else, help us to trust in you, O God. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, we pray together. Amen. If we could be of help to you now or at your convenience, we would be honored to do so. I invite you to stand as we continue to worship together. Pray with me, please. Loving Father God, we come to you this morning with a grateful heart, grateful for your willingness to be patient and wait on us to blossom into a season of fruitfulness. Yours is truly the gospel of the second chance. May the fruit that we bear nourish the message 
in the ministry of this place and beyond. Please accept our gifts this morning in that spirit. Yet we also ask for that same spirit to be planted deep within us as we wait and encourage and celebrate a season of fruitfulness for those we love who may be in a season of barrenness. We trust your word, Father. Thank you for hearing us better than we speak as we offer these prayers in your most holy name. Amen. As we pass the peace of Christ to one another.
brothers and sisters and friends, none of you are a squash. Each of you are an oak tree of faith. God bless you. Thank you.